Space flight, like all flight, is a trade-off between weight and thrust. The more weight you want to move, the more thrust is required. Aerospace engineers are always trying to reduce weight. That's what Musk, as chief engineer at SpaceX, is trying to do with Stage Zero. He doesn't want to add landing legs to a super heavy booster, it's just too much weight. The solution is that when the booster returns to Earth, it won't have any landing structure. Instead, it'll be caught by the tower. Same for the Starship, unless Starship is designed to land on the Moon or Mars. Musk even told his audience this is a big deal, but also a big challenge. It's, it's really worth emphasizing that the, the whole launch system, which is basically stage zero, uh, is, um, I'd say, as complex and difficult as either the booster or the ship. Indeed, stage zero is one of the most genius designs that Elon Musk ever made. Let's find out everything about it today in this episode of Alpha Tech. First, let's go to the tank farm. This is truly a utopian fuel blockhouse of the current world. Starship's orbital launch site tank farm is a group of eight massive storage tanks surrounded by thousands of feet of insulated plumbing, industrial pumps, a small army of cryo coolers, a blockhouse filled with a human-sized valve, and much more. Said tank farm has been under construction for the better part of 2021, beginning with work on its concrete foundation in January. Nine months later, the orbital tank farm is nearly complete. A power distribution and communications blockhouse has been completed for weeks, with virtually all the wiring and cabling needed for the orbital launch mount and tower already in place. Several hundred feet of concrete cable and plumbing conduit have been filled with thousands of feet of wires, cables, and pipes, and have been sealed and buried. The tank farm blockhouse, where a dozen or so massive valves control the flow of propellant, to and from the orbital launch mountain tower is complete save for some final plumbing. Notably, to insulate those seven thin steel storage tanks, SpaceX has contracted with a water storage tank company to build seven cryo shells and said million gallon water tank. Talking about the ability of the tank farm, the water tank has a capacity of around a million gallons of water. For reference, the water tower at the Kennedy Space Center's L-39A has a capacity of 300,000 gallons. Seven main tanks should be able to store roughly 2,400 tons of liquid methane, LCH4, 5,400 tons of LOX, and 2,600 tons of LN2. LCH4 and LOX are Starship's propellants, while LN2 is needed to subcool that propellant below its boiling point significantly increasing its density and the mass of propellant Starships can store. To launch, the entire rocket requires about approximately 1,040 metric tons of CH4, approximately 780 on the booster and 260 on Starship, and about 3,760 metric tons of LOX, about 2,820 on the booster and approximately 940 on Starship. With these rough estimates, the orbital tank farm has just enough propellant for one orbital launch. The propellants in these tanks will flow through subcoolers that are next to the tank farm in order to super chill the propellants. These subcoolers use the temperature of liquid nitrogen to chill the propellant so they're denser, thus packing more energy into the vehicle. After traveling through the subcoolers, the propellants will then be sent to the GSE bunker and then to the launch table and the integration tower. Now let's talk about the best highlight of Stage Zero, which has attracted a lot of interest from space fans, the Launch Tower. Named after the Mecha Godzilla character from the Godzilla movie franchise, SpaceX's Mechazilla Launch Tower is one of the most ambitious features of a spaceflight project already breaking new ground. Indeed, its design definitely blows your mind. The Launch Tower consists of a steel truss section, a lightning rod on top, and a pair of mechanical arms that can lift catch and recover the booster. The mechanical arms are attached to a carriage and controlled by a pulley at the top of the tower. The pulley is linked to a winch and spool at the base of the tower. Using the winch, the carriage and mechanical arms can move vertically, with support from bearings attached at the sides of the carriage. A linear hydraulic actuator is used to move the arms side by side. Tracks are mounted on top of arms, which are used to position the booster or spacecraft precisely. The tower is mounted with a quick disconnect arm that can extend to and contract from the booster. The functions are similar to a quick disconnect mount. It must be admitted that everything related to this tower is so complicated, and completing it is truly an extraordinary feat. 
Take Mechazilla's two rocket-catching arms as an example. To truly install the structure on the tower, SpaceX had to finish installing and rigging thousands of feet of steel cable that via a complex system of pulleys will connect to powered draw works that will support the carriage and catch arms and lift the assembly up and down the tower like an elevator car. The catch arms and carriage will also need to be mated with a giant cable carrier already staged on the carrier that will connect the structure to ground and control systems. Finally, when it comes to the launch tower, we have to mention the Orbital Launch Mount, or OLM. OLM will be a great combination with the launch tower. The two duos will help each other in the process of assembling the Starship and Super Heavy booster and the process of capturing the two vehicles. But even Elon Musk said, this launch mount is not easy to build. Designed to secure fuel and launch orbital starships, the launch table has to be able to withstand the nearly 5,000 metric tons or 11 billion pound weight of a fully fueled starship, hold super heavy in place during static fires, and pre-launch ignitions that could produce up to 7,500 metric tons of thrust, and survive the unspeakable fury of 33 Raptor engines operating simultaneously. The biggest reason is that concrete pads are absolutely gigantic and take a very long time and lots of money to build. It also takes forever to weld. SpaceX also needs a long time between fit checks. It's very complex with lots of moving parts. Six columns of OLM are filled with concrete and built-in concrete hexagons next to the capture tower. It has an approximate dimension length of 5 meters and is 2.4 meters in diameter. Four of them are steel tube components, one of which is large and with a short distance between two steel plates. They have another design to connect the two steel bars together. The powerful 16 threaded rods are now anchored deep in the concrete of the columns. Each of the 16 threaded rods is anchored in the concrete to a depth of about 4 meters with this arrangement making no sense of these welded plates and anchor bolts. Unlike all other major orbital Starship launch pad parts, the custom launch mount and table's successful and near total completion is an absolute necessity for any kind of orbital test flight or full up super heavy static fire. Only part of the tank farm is truly necessary and the vast majority of the tower's intended task can be completed with workarounds if neither is fully ready. Without the launch mount, however, testing much beyond what SpaceX has already accomplished is mostly impossible in the near term. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.